Okay, let's get going. Uh, hi everybody, T today we are going to talk about security and hacking Drupal. I'm uh, Matt Korstoff, I uh, lead a team of Drupal developers at FFW, formerly Blink Reaction and Pro People. We're the largest Drupal shop in the world, about 400 people now. Uh, we built enterprise Drupal applications for large corporate clients. Uh, we're based all over, but I work from the Princeton, New Jersey office. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Drupal Geddon SQL injection vulnerability. This was a major vulnerability in the Drupal database API that affected all Drupal 7 and 8 installations and a handful of Drupal 6 sites. This bug allowed a skilled attacker to inject arbitrary SQL into your Drupal database and in many cases take full control of your web server. This is widely regarded as the worst bug ever discovered in Drupal though now that the storm has passed, I think we can reasonably assert that little real harm was done. One of my personal websites was affected by this attack. Uh, th this is, uh, this is whaleocalypse.com. This is where I post my cartoons about whales in a post-apocalyptic future. Uh, th this is actually why I got into software development originally, not not because I like specifically wanted to be a software developer. I mean, I I did, but uh, just because mostly because I needed some place to post my uh, cartoons about talking whales and talking fruit and parody real estate ads. So, so Drupal was the, the natural choice. So anyway, th this is a this is a plaything for me. So it really didn't matter for me that that it got hacked. I just kind of shrugged and uh, restored from backups. There was actually a tremendous upside to being hacked, and that was that it allowed me to examine the artifacts left behind by the attackers. I spent a long, long time looking at these artifacts, and I was able to use them to reverse engineer the tools that these attackers used to break into my site. You can view these tools on GitHub, along with a set of files to help you defend against this and similar attacks. Uh, in, in this talk today, I'm going to show you uh, how these tools were used to attack my site. I'm going to show you in detail how to use them, and more importantly, I'm going to show you how to defend against this and similar attacks. And if you want more information on this, you can get effectively the same talk on, on my blog, which is mattkorostoff.com, and it's linked off of GitHub, and I'll, I'll put a link to it on the, uh, on the, the DrupalCon website. Uh, a couple of disclaimers before I begin with the, the technical portion. Uh, First, I'm going to reveal how this hack was pulled off in very, very specific detail, including a large amount of fully functional exploit code. If at any point you feel yourself going, hey, wait, stop, you're telling people how to hack my site, I, I, I'd invite you to stamp that feeling down. If you are still vulnerable to any of the techniques described here today, I'm sorry to say you were already hacked months ago. You've probably been hacked several dozen times by different individuals, and there's a very good chance that your server is now part of a botnet being used to send spam. The simple fact is that we need to be able to have honest, frank, detailed discussions about security in public in order to educate ourselves and, and prevent the next Drupal again. Because if we don't have that conversation, someone else will, and that someone probably has malicious intent. And that means releasing the exploit code, and it means letting people use that code for learning and penetration testing. And by the way, this is not just an academic exercise. You, you can literally go, I'll show you right now, uh, you can go to exploitdb.com, and you can find five versions of this that are way worse than anything that I'm going to show you. These tools exist, and they are freely available, and pretending they don't exist uh, will not make them go away. We need to learn how they work so we can defend against them. Uh, the, the second disclaimer I want to offer, uh, this, this one's kind of more of a joke, but I'm going to confess to just some really terrible things that I did on whaleocalypse.com that let people break in. It, sh it should go without saying that these are huge risks that I took on a plaything website. I would never take these same risks with client work, and neither should you. Uh, so let's explore this bug a little bit. The, the bug specifically lies in the Drupal database abstraction layer. That's the layer of Drupal that allows you to connect to a MySQL or some other, uh, some other type of database server, specifically in this expand arguments function. This is part of Drupal core. This is database.inc. Uh, th this, this function you would 
never have occasion to use unless you were actually doing Drupal core development. Uh, and, and otherwise, you probably wouldn't even have occasion to know that this exists. This is a normal, boring utility method that does some pre-processing on database uh, statements before they're sent to the MySQL server. I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Um, but the the sort, of, the sort of key thing to realize is that this is a, a thing that flew under the radar because no one ever uses it or touches it. Uh, a normal Drupal database query. This is this is about as simple as a Drupal database query gets. What we're gonna what we're doing in this query is we're getting the the title of a node whose ID is one two three. We don't pass one two three directly into. Uh, we don't pass one, two, three directly into MySQL. Instead, what we do is we supply a token that will be replaced in the, Dru in the Drupal database abstraction layer. And the reason we do that is ironically, as you'll see, for security purposes. This, these tokens get sanitized for us. It was the sanitization itself that had the bug in this case, which is what, what made it such a, such a terrible bug. So this is a pretty simple database query. Uh, you can get slightly more complex with a database query. You can use a token as a part of an in statement, and you can replace it with an array of values. The problem is there's no straightforward way to pass a PHP array into MySQL. MySQL only understands strings. So at some point in the preparation of this database statement, this array has to be collapsed down into a comma-separated string. That's what expand arguments is for. So expand arguments is going to do one completely simple, straightforward thing. It's going to take NIDs, and it's going to change it into this. NID 0, NIDs 1, NIDs 2. It does nothing else. The problem with this implementation, and this, this by the way, makes total sense. This is uh, a completely sensible way for PHP to interface with, uh, it's a completely sensible layer on top of PDO, which is itself pretty cumbersome to use. The, uh, uh, the, the problem is that these keys, uh, NID 0, NIDs 1, these are not sequentially assigned. What these are, are the array keys that we defined ourselves on the line before. So I would ask you to consider what would happen if you could get Drupal to run a query like this. Digest this for a moment. You can get Drupal to run a query like this. There's a number of ways to get Drupal to run a query like this, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's hack into a website. So this is a th this is a, a version. This is a Drupal website. It's running on my local host. It's running on this computer right here. Uh, version 7.31, the last vulnerable version of Drupal before the bug was discovered and patched in 7.32. Uh, this is incredibly simple to do. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put a breakpoint in my code. I'm going to start listening for debug statements. Oops. I don't need any programming capability in order to do this. I'm going to do this completely from the WebKit inspector. Uh, what I want to do is replace the normal the normal uh, username input form with one that has some SQL in it. And in so, because I've created two of them, I'm going to turn my input from a string into an array, the first of which has this delete statement in it. So if we take a look at the flood table, we can see I have a number of failed login attempts. That's what flood is for. It tracks failed login attempts and then bans. It's used to ban users if they, if they go over. Um, what I'm going to do is, so we've, we've stopped the code. Oh, I meant to do a conditional breakpoint. Add condition. So uh, this, this might be a, a little hard to see if you're at the back of the room, but uh, we've built a query str We built a query that's simply a string. It says select star from users where name equals 
name token. Name token is supposed to be replaced by admin. Admin is supposed to be a string, but by creating two user login forms, I've turned my input into an array. And I, I realize this is kind of kind of small, but one of the array keys is some SQL. So if I step one, two, three, now here we are on line 755. This is where the substitution occurs. Boom, injected. We, we've now injected some SQL, and this is going to be passed directly to MySQL with no further sanitization. And if I allow this to run to completion, we can see I have, in fact, injected some SQL into Drupal. I've deleted records from the flood table. Oh, no. Any, any questions about how that works? I know there's a lot more detail coming soon, but that, that basic premise? OK, great. So that's, that's cool to truncate the, fr the flood table. That allows you un unlimited, uh, unlimited log login attempts. So it enables a brute force attack, but there's a lot more that you can do with that. So using the same vector, I trivially worked up a little uh, Drupalgeddon SQL injection client. It's pretty much the same thing. It just sends a, po again, this is on GitHub. It's, it sends a post request to the Drupal user login form and does a little like um, character escaping for me that's difficult to do um, with just typing manually. Uh, so I'm going to use, use this tool. I call it the injector. Uh, I'm going to use this tool to give myself additional permissions that I don't currently have. So I'll visit this site as an anonymous user. And of course, of course, anonymous users do not have the ability to create content. If I navigate to node add, I get an access denied. Um, so what I want to do is I want to inject some content into the, uh, uh, into the role permission table. This takes about four seconds to run. And now when I refresh this page, you can see I have the ability to create any content type. So let's put some spam on the home page. Boom, we have front page content created in uh, two Unix commands. So that, in fact, we only, and we only needed one of them. Um, so that's about as bad as a hack gets, but we're going to take this a lot further. Uh, another, another thing that I, as a spammer, want to do is I want to run JavaScript on this site. Now, I'm an anonymous user, so I don't have uh, the full HTML text format available to me. So let's, uh, I, I might as well be an admin, so let's just flip that, flip that on. I'm going to insert a new row into the role permission table giving myself the ability to use full HTML. Refresh this page and you can see now that I have full HTML available to me. And of course, of course, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to run a pop-up. And you can see what happens even before the page finishes reloading is now I'm triggering for every user that views, this, views the home page or views this render node. Uh, in, fa in fact, it's like hard to get rid of even as an administrator <laughs> uh, because it comes up so quickly. So that sucks. <laughs> that, uh, because the, the MySQL database is so central to the Drupal application, and, and sen sensibly so, there's, there's nothing wrong with connecting to a MySQL database so long as your connection is secure. Um, because the MySQL database is so central to the Drupal application and all configuration is stored in it, once you get access to that system, uh, you, pr you pretty much uh, rule the entire application. You can do anything with it. So uh, it, it's, all, it's, all, it's all well and good to, uh, to understand what sort of damage was, is theoretically possible with this power. But what I was mostly interested in when I started doing this research is how the real hackers who attacked my site in the real world actually use this power. And I can answer that in tremendous detail now. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you exactly what was done. And I should note the variety of attack that I'm about to show you 
was, according to data released by Acquia, the same variety that was experienced by 68% of users hosted on that platform in the first week after Drupalgeddon was discovered. The, rema the remaining were some mix of people uh, putting PHP in blocks and people changing the uh, user one password to be like some, be like one, two, three or something, or, or adding a user. But those are all pretty obvious and uh, easy to understand. This one is a lot more exotic. What we want to do now, we, you and me, we're, we're in a hacking collective together, and what we want to do in our hacking collective is three things. First of all, we want to inject some SQL. That part's easy. We know how to do that already. And if there's time, I'll show you the code that allows us to, to, to do all this. But um, we want to get arbitrary code execution, which uh, and we want to be able to run any PHP that we want on this server, effecti effectively making it into our slave. And finally, we want the ability to upload any file that we want. And these three things together are pretty much all the things our server does. It <laughs> holds files, executes files, uh, and connects to the database. So uh, the particular style of attack was, it, t it took me a really long time to understand, but I. I, I get it now. The, the, fir the first step, the, in, the SQL injection, um, it, it happens at, in the menu router table. The menu router table is where Drupal stores, uh, stores routes or pages. So if, if you take a look at the menu router table, these are all, I know this is hard to see in the back, but uh, th these are all the, when you implement hook menu, a cache of that g go goes in here. So. Uh, when you navigate to slash uh, example.com slash admin slash appearance, uh, this access callback, user access, will be run. That's the name of a PHP function. Somewhere someone has written like function user access, and it re if, if it returns true, then you get access to the page. So what this attacker has done is he's inserted a new row. It's just kind of randomly named. It's XJFXIA. But the callback, instead of being uh, returning a HTML string or a render array, the callback is file put contents. So when someone navigates, navigated, because this did happen in the real world, uh, when someone navigated to whaleocalypse.com slash XJFXIA, file put contents run, ran. And we know what file it was putting in where, because those arguments are supplied in the access arguments column. So they wrote out a file to the poll module, random selection as far as I can tell, uh, and the contents of that file was some PHP. And I'm going to show you what that PHP does in, in, in a minute. And going forward, I'm going to refer to this as backdoor.php because it's impossible to keep straight if you use these random letters. Uh, so once that file is written to disk, uh, it becomes a it becomes a backdoor that allows you to execute any code. So, so that the hacker navigates to this URL, and the act of navigating to this URL creates this file, backdoor.php, and then they never need to go to that URL again. They can, but they have no reason to. Backdoor.php itself, and I, I can, uh, I, I'll, I'm gonna run this exploit in a minute, so I'll, I'll show it to you, is a single line of code that's deliberately obfuscated. But what it, what it does is it listens for a cookie. It waits for someone to send it a HTTP request of a particular format um, that ne it needs to have uh, th three cookies in it. The, and these are just randomly named KCQF3. These don't mean anything. Um, the, the first two base64 decode and chj1 these are effectively just passwords to prevent uh, an unauthorized user ironically from <laughs> from getting access to to this uh, to this backdoor the sort of meat of what's going on is this long string here this is a base64 encoded php string what the hacker does is he base64 encodes the, uh, the code that he wants to run, and he packages it up in a cookie, and he sends a get request to this file, module slash pull slash backdoor.php. And then my server will run that as though it was its, its own file. So that sucks also. <laughs> it's, 
it's, ni it's nice that we know this, that we know that this hacker got the power of arbitrary code execution. I, I, I'll show you in more detail how I, how I know that he did this uh, later. But uh, what I want to know is, it, again, in the real world, how did this hacker actually use the power of arbitrary code execution against my site? And we can answer that in a really interesting way. This is one of the artifacts that I found left over on my web server. This was like some random set of letters dot PHP. This is not my 404 page. This is the attacker's 404 page. Now, my best guess at what happened here is that the, uh, so the, the attacker sent a request to backdoor.php that to execute some code that requests out to another web server which holds a secondary exploit file and what this code does is like download the bigger exploit package that we, that we want and save it to disk somewhere and as near as I can tell on one of the occasions, and he did this on six or seven times in different spots in my server, but on one of the occasions that he attempted this, his server was down, I guess, and I, all I got was his 404 page. And in fact, not now not only do I know what he did with this backdoor file, I, na I know the name of the village in Romania where he lives <laughs> 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 uh, because his IP address is, is right on there. I mean, it might be a proxy, but here, here it is. You can still go to that if you want. Like, that's his website. Like, like DDoSing him right now. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually pretty impressed. Like, uh, good on him. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt, really hurt my life, and uh, it was a, it was a pretty exotic hack. Uh, so uh, when we when we take this file and we com and we compile it's PHP when we compile it down to HTML, um, which by the way the first time I did it, I was like super scared and I disconnected from the internet before I did it. <laughs> um, when we compile it down to HTML. Uh, what we find is that it's a file upload dialog. So he got, uh, he got arbitrary code execution power, and he used that power to create a new tool on the system that allows him to upload files. And now he owns the whole system. He can really do anything that he wants. Um, and I will, I will show you, this, this one uh, unfortunately takes about uh, 15 seconds to run. Um, so this is the f sort of full exploit package that we're going to run, and while it runs, I'll show you. I'll show you the code that we're executing. This is my best guess at the actual exploit that was used against mine and tens of thousands of other sites. It, I mean, you, if you want to check it out on GitHub, it's really super commented up, so you, even if you're not a programmer, you can probably follow it pretty well. But the gist is well, I give it a URL, and it goes and it hacks that URL. It injects the SQL we want. Uh, it uh, gets us arbitrary code execution, and then it uses the arbitrary code execution right, uh, right here. So here we, sen here we send our cookies to the server. It uses that. To, I'm, I'm at... Uh, I'm actually going to grab from the internet the, his uploader form uh, and write it to my server. So that, that, should, that should be finished by now. Yep. And if I now navigate to backdoor.php, I can see that the end of backdoor.php is just PHP info, so you can learn a little about the system that you're trying to break into. Um, and if I were to ping this with the proper set of cookies, which is actually pretty easy to do, uh, I would get the server to run any code that I want. And then the other uh, backdoor is uploader.php. This is in the Bartik theme, which actually, because I'm running the Bartik theme, gives us the convenient ability to change the site logo. And there we go. We have a fully exploited website. And to just to be to be clear, what what this particular hacker almost certainly had in mind was not to change my logo and be like hacked, got you, yeah. What what he's almost certainly doing here is compiling a database of thousands upon thousands of exploited sites. So if you want to exp if you want to exploit uh, example.com, like just look in my database row ten. 10 million, you can go to example.com slash QPT 
l47.php and uh, presumably he sells this along with a set of, a set of instructions because it's really hard <laughs> to figure out how how this works otherwise uh, as far, as far as i know and as far as as far as I can tell, it was not interested in changing any content on my site, and I really can't imagine why, why he would. It's, it's, it's pretty low traffic. Uh, so before I move on to the defense procedures and how you can protect yourself from this and similar attacks, uh, does anyone have any questions about the attack procedure? Yes, sir? The, the question was, what were the direct repercussions on my pull module? Oh. I, I, I don't understand what you're asking. I'm sorry. What were the directory permissions on the pull model? Directory? Oh, the directory permissions. I'm going to get to that. That's one of the defense procedures, and that's also part of that disclaimer I offered at the beginning is like, <laughs> don't – don't let yourself turn into me, uh, but it, they, they were they were poor. They were either the seven seven five or seven 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 or something like that. It, Apache had the ability to write to it, which it shouldn't, and is that's that's coming up. That's what this slide is is about. Uh, but yeah, good good thinking. Yeah, sure. So you specifically wanted to go to that place. Like if you wanted to take control of your server, you could have just done a virtual environment on it. But you wanted that specific thing to start with, right? Yeah, I, it's, it's very hard for me to say what the like, uh, what makes an exploit kit marketable on the like black market. Uh, <laughs> Presumably, he knows his customers, and they want that. I, I don't know why, though. But you're, you're right. That would, be, that would be, to me, more terrifying. Any other questions about the, the attack payloads? Okay. Uh, let's, let's move on to the, the defense procedures. Uh, so, and these are kind of in priority order of how important they are. So, if you are running Drupal 7 version uh, 7.31 or lower, or... Drupal 8 beta 1 or lower, your site's already hacked, so just kind of be zen about that. Like, be, be okay. Like, it's been hacked for a while now, so don't get all stressed right now. You've been living your life, and you've been happy for seven months with a hacked website. It's, it hasn't been so bad. Um, <laughs> you got to upgrade because you're spamming a lot of people right now. <laughs> That's very important. Uh, it, won't, it won't undo the damage that was done. For that, the only solution is to restore from backups. And if, if you don't have backups, it's a very challenging situation, of course. Um, but th this, isn't, this isn't really like so much, I've been doing this presentation for, uh, for uh, like s six months now, and this is uh, just not even like worth really talking about anymore. Like the first time I gave this, maybe you could save yourself by upgrading, but at this point, if you haven't upgraded, you, you're hacked. So go, go and do it and just uh, be snappy about it next time. Uh, the second most important thing that uh, that you can do to secure uh, your site against this and similar attacks is to set proper file permissions in your code base. So Apache, the, the Apache web server never needs to write to your PHP files. It never needs to add them to them. It never needs to change them. It only ever needs to read them. And for this demonstration, I'm running the most insecure file permission that I, that I could, which, it, which is anyone can write to anything. Um, and, and, and in fact, be, I, if we're on the same I, IP LAN right now, you can, you can probably get into my computer like right the second because it's this Apache is accessible to the outside network. Um, so th this, is this, this is very simple to deal with. There, there, are, tons of, uh, there are tons of scripts available for automatically setting proper Drupal file permissions. This is, this is one that I, that I like. Uh, I, 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 this is on GitHub, but I'd also encourage you to sort of do some Googling on that. Google like Drupal Unix file permissions. There, there's lots of different uh, schemas depending on your hosting situation, what you're trying to do with Drupal exactly. But the gist of this is this is going to iterate over every directory in Drupal and set it to a, set it to a proper permission scheme. Um, the files directory, which is like where user uploaded images go, that's going to get a slightly different treatment than executable code and 
the settings.php file is going to also get slightly different treatment, but there's a lot of different variations on this, and, and they, they, all, they all work fine for, for different use cases. So I'll simply run that code. It runs really fast. And now you can see that the only person with the ability to write to, uh, to, write to my, uh, my code directories is me. And then my Apache user is called staff, and he can only read. If I had taken this one simple step, this, this 10 seconds to paste this script in and run it, I, I would have been totally safe from the, that step where, where you navigate to backdoor and it creates a new file for you, would not have been possible. Um, so that, uh, that's, a, that's a very simple thing that you can do that will secure you from a large variety of, uh, of a, attack vectors. Uh, the third most important thing that you can do is host with professionals. And I mean specifically one of these four organizations. And I'm calling these four organizations out as, uh, being pr as ha having a, a high security game because all of them were patched at the system level or put some remediation in place before full public disclosure of the Drupal get in vulnerability. I know there's a lot of, a lot of hosting vendors here, so I'm always looking to, to add to this list. If, if there's other groups that, that had a similar, uh, similar experience, that, that's awesome. Um, you just do your due diligence. Make, make sure that you're dealing with people who understand Drupal. Uh, if, you, if you try and host on like D DigitalOcean or Rackspace or something, that might, that might be fine fr from a perspective of load and cost, but you, you also have to balance that with, with like, uh, how bad would it be if this site got broken into? And if the answer, like me, is no, not that bad, I'll, I'll go write a talk about it and pitch it at DrupalCon, like, <laughs> the, then, then by all means, ho host yourself. But if it's, if it's something that you're doing for a, for a big client who's giving you money and that you're making guarantees to, host it with someone who knows what they're doing. Um, this, this is not exactly a defense procedure. It's more of a disaster recovery procedure, but you want to make sure that you're taking automated nightly backups. And that, and that is true, by the way, even if you're on some platform as a service system that makes backups for you, because generally those backups will, uh, on, a, on a PAS system will run not as often as you need them to. So this is, this is incredibly simple. If you don't know how to, how to set up cron, it's, it's literally uh, one command. I'll, I'll make this a little bigger that cron tab dash e and you can look up cron syntax but ba basically basically what this says is zero, zero, zero minutes and two is two hours so every day at 2 a.m i'm just going to make a full dump in in reality i would like gzip this or something but uh, make a full database dump from my my web root to a non web root uh, directory. My my backup scheme is that I make a backup every night at 2 a.m. I keep that for 30 days. I make a backup every uh, every week, which I keep for six months, and I make a backup every month that I keep forever. Um, re really easy to do. Uh, it's a thing a lot of people delay on just because it seems like it would be hard, but it's really not. It's also very important to store your code in, ver in version control. Even you don't have to post it on GitHub. You, you can have a locally versioned copy of it, and you can you can see here. I just I, it's, it was one command to do or two commands. I, uh, get init. I made one single commit ever for this code base. Um, and what it allows me to do. I can see very, I know red on black is, is hard to read, but it, uh, I can see very easily the files that were injected into, into my code base. So if you find yourself hacked, it's actually pretty simple to just copy down your, co copy down your code base, uh, put, it on, put it in the same directory as your .git uh, folder, and diff it. So this becomes, for me, really, really easy um, to undo. And 
and I got rid of all the exploit files li like it was nothing. That doesn't help with the database. The database you're still going to have to restore from backups. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the code should be, ve should be very easy to recover in a circumstance like this, a, a, ma a matter of minutes. And in fact, even though I wasn't like preparing for disaster recovery just because I just version everything I do because it's, I find that easier, uh, it was pretty trivial for me to just back this out. Um, another important security measure is to make sure that your Drupal, con I'm not talking about your Unix cron. Your Unix cron is, is running even if you don't know about it usually. Possible that it's not, but it probably is. I'm talking about Drush cron, um, or uh, Drupal cron, which, which is the process that gets executed when you navigate to like yoursite.com slash cron.php. You can execute it from Drush. Uh, here I have it uh, running, uh, running twice an hour, so every, every 30 minutes. And the reason this is important is that even when you have proper file directory permissions set, um, Apache still... Um, Apache still has the right to edit or delete any HT access files in directories for which it has write access, which which blew my mind when I, when I learned it. Because like basically what I'm saying is there's no way really to deny Apache ac uh, write access to your HT access file in the files, which I didn't believe when someone told me about it. And so that's what that's actually what this hello world.php is me confirming that that's in fact the case. Um, so the, the, way, the way Drupal deals with having a writable directory inside of your code base is even if you don't know how to read HT access, you can, you can see we just turn off PHP inside HT access. Someone who gets the ability, someone who is able to drive Apache on your web server is going to be able to delete this file. It gets restored on cron. That's why it's important to have cron running because if you have cron running actively, uh, you'll, they'll have a pretty small exploit window in which they can run code out of your files directory. Um, it's important to take PHP security releases as seriously as you take Drupal security releases. And the reason I say that is that anyone running PHP 5.5 or higher was immune to the most common type of exploit, the one that I showed you here today. And the reason they were immune, this is, this is backdoor.php, or it's a version that I reverse engineered and deobfuscated. The original was like all, all named weird things and all on a single line. But um, backdoor.php, which r just a reminder, this is the file to which you hand off a cookie and it executes any code that you want. It does that by taking advantage of a vulnerability, or not a vulnerability, but a feature which has since been removed in preg replace, which allows you to evaluate a search subject as PHP. So I can pass PHP into, uh, into preg replace, and it will be evaluated as though I were passing it into like the eval function. That's gone in 5.5, so just ma make that upgrade. It's, it's pretty painless to, to do in, in most circumstances. PHP is pretty good about reverse compatibility within major versions. Uh, this one is a little more controversial, and it kind of depends on your, your use case. But if you have a site that is uh, low enough value that you can't afford to staff it full time, which would certainly be the case for uh, my post-apocalyptic whale cartoon. It's probably low enough value to r to suffer the minor risk of breakage during security patches. So you can apply security patches automatically with Drush. It's pretty easy to do. That's the that's the first line. If you're versioning, it's a little more complicated, and you should be versioning. So. Um, the, the, tra the trade-off here is that you might pull down a security update which breaks the entirety of your site. I, that's something that you have to, have to weigh for yourself. Certainly, certainly if you're choosing between having a site that's maybe hacked and having a site that might go down from, uh, f from a uh, bad security patch, it makes more sense to... Uh, it makes more sense to apply the patches. That's that's my opinion. 
Um, the, I mean, the best case scenario is to just have a staff of professionals who will monitor and apply security patches and then test that they do the thing they're supposed to do. But if that's not an option for you, I, I, you really have to think about how bad your day would be if you, if you came in one day and you, f you found that your, your site was now hosting a bunch of pornography and it had sent an email to everyone in your database, uh, buy, buy p pornography from, uh, for, from mysite.com. Like that, uh, if, if that's a risk that you're not willing to take, then just take this other, to me, smaller risk. Of, autumn, of your site might go down, but it probably won't. I've never had a set of security updates break any feature on my site ever. Um, and this is, is, is the last, is, I don't know that this, in most, in most cases this will make no sense to do. Uh, but in my case, uh, where I'm the only person logging in, or where you have a small group of maybe 15 or 20 people logging in, maybe even they're all in the same office, you don't really need to let post traffic into Apache. So you're, most of us are probably running Apache behind the varnish caching layer. So you can do some pre-processing on the requests that you get before passing it off to Apache and therefore PHP. So one, one thing that, uh, that I like to do is if the request is a post request, which it would, which it would really have to be to do any SQL injection of any complexity, uh, and it doesn't come from my IP address at my house, just drop the request. You just, I'm just not letting it through. And I can, I can demo that for you if, if you want, but I, I think it's probably pretty, pretty clear the, the meaning there. So you put these lines in your VCL file and these lines in your HT access file. So if someone tries to navigate directly to Apache, they just get, uh, they just get a 403. And if they try to navigate to your site like a normal way, go to yoursite.com and then try and log in, they get this 404. Uh, so the the la last thing that I want to um, I, I want to touch on but before I, I open for questions um, is you know, so, you know this has had th this event it was. It was it was very scary for our community. It was really the first of, of its kind. Uh, it's been a, the Drupal security team was founded 11 years ago, and this is this is the first vulnerability anywhere close to this magnitude that they they've uncovered. Um, so it's uh, it's very the, the name Drupal Geddon, which admittedly I've been I've been a very like big user of. Um, it, it's easy to imagine. It was easy to imagine while this was occurring that the world was ending. But as we, we look back on it, and we look at the real functional results of this exploit, it seems rather clear to me that it wasn't actually that big of a deal. I mean, it was a really bad bug, but like, it, uh, honest to God, sh show of hands, did, did, did anyone here like lose money or data as a product of Drupal Geddon? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened to you, uh, and that 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 really sucks. But here here we are at DrupalCon, and there's two people, like it, that, and that sucks. That's that's bad. Um, I don't know that it warrants an analogy to the literal end of the world. So, <laughs> so uh, just when we consider the, these facts, that. Anyone who had proper directory permissions configured, which probably nearly every, all of us did, was immune to the most common attack. Anyone who was running PHP 5.5 or higher, it's probably about a third to a quarter of us are, was immune from the most common attack. Anyone hosted on the four biggest Drupal hosts was immune to the most common attack, and, and probably probably all attacks, to, to be honest. Uh, the amount of real world damage I, I think was just not that big and the learning experience was really important. So in answer to a question that I was asked on the last time I gave this presentation, do, do you think this was really Drupal again? Do you think this was really going to kind of de destroy some aspect of our community? My answer is no. Uh, so uh, that's all, all I have for you and, and I have, I have about a 15 minutes for questions, if, if you have any. Yes, sir. The, the question was, how was this vulnerability discovered? And uh, 
so that's that's kind of a complicated history, but it was uh, it was first reported maybe a year or m- maybe a little more before it was acted upon, and it was reported at, in like it was reported in some queue like a usability queue that not not reported as a security issue, um, and I, I don't know who on the Drupal security team ultimately found the issue and decided to act on it, but there there is an official group of. And in fact, we have, we have one one of, one of them here with us today. I thank you for coming. Uh, though I think you saw this presentation before. Uh, uh, there's an official group of people uh, that the uh, that are have the task of identifying security fixes and releasing advisories and assigning them an urgency. Um, so I actually don't know how this got into into their hands, but there, there have been a, a, no, a number of discussions about in sort of improving the security issue reporting process as a result of this, because there, there was someone who, someone in the world who knew this was possible, one guy, uh, for like a year before any action was taken. But he, as far as far as I know, he's just like he's just a Drupal user who's uh, who was doing some penetration testing for an application that he was building for for his employer. Or, or she. I, mean, I should be gender neutral here. Yes, sir. I think um, that person didn't really know specifically that it was SQL injection. They they were like, this seems like a bug, um, and uh, and it might be SQL injection, but they weren't really sure. But then it was um, it was later found by uh, a company called Section Eins, um, and uh, Stefan Horst is the name of the person who worked there. He was they were hired for a penetration test, so they found it and reported it to the security team, cool. who then coordinated on it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. You you need to what you need to wipe your whole server and reinstall your operating system and I'll I'll tell I'll tell you why let me let me give you uh, and this is exactly what I what I did uh, which again is a hassle but there's there's really no way around it let me give you a nightmare scenario to sort of make this point let let's imagine that your server was configured in such a way <coughs> that uh, the the uh, exploit or the hacker was able able to gain access to change binary files in in your root and let's imagine that the hacker replaces the apache binary with a new version of the apache binary that he's created which will do exactly one thing differently every 5000 requests puts a little bit of javascript at the bottom of the response i don't know about the rest of you but i would never catch that and like Unix systems are complex, and there are a lot of places for worms to hide. And like, it, it's a little bit of a balancing act. Like, it is that that scenario I just described, like a real world thing that we know happened. No, not as a result of this bug. That that is a real virus that hit Apache boxes about three years ago. Um, so so you do have to measure like. It's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars to wipe this server, and I really don't see anything wrong with it. I know maybe you'll get away with it, but you, if you're running an enterprise application, um, you, uh, if you find one day that your server is being used to send spam, is that a risk that your business can tolerate? And I think probably for most of us, the answer is no. So you, you have to restore from from scratch. Uh, yes, you, sir. I think that's an excellent idea, and, and, and in fact, a, a previous version of this talk included that strategy. But I just I cut it for time, and also because it's it, it's it's kind of obs- hard to explain without without live demoing it. Yes, sir. Hi, Matt. 
So uh, yeah, Ben Jevons from the uh, Drupal security team, and I saw your presentation on this in New York City. So I uh, just wanted to point out, um, you know, there's one thought around the idea of the hosts that you talked about. So this is not a question, but more just a for the recording. Um, so the security team is working through some policy on uh, sort of what security team members can share. And so, you know, you have the slide about different hosts and uh, the idea about certain hosts being more professional than others. So just, you know, the Drupal security team works for all Drupal users, right? So we want to secure all Drupal sites regardless of where those are hosted. So uh, some security team members work for some hosting companies, but certainly it's not, um, you know, uh, in the intention to secure their customers only. Is kind of all that th th thank you for yeah. pointing that out. And I was I was actually a little worried about that that implication. Um, so first of all, th thank you thank you for your work on the security team. You you guys, yeah, you guys do. You you guys do amazing work, and then that's actually your your work is one of the core things that ke that keeps me on Drupal as opposed to some like. Uh, young hot technology because like that's the perfect example of an of an uh, like a human institution that we've built over a long period of time that no matter how good your code is like you 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 don't have that in meteor js um, so I, I I know that was a, that was a controversial that was a controversial thing that some uh, some hosts got early access to this information. I do. I do want to say it, and being, a, and being a person who got late access to it and who had his site hacked, I, I do want to say, like, I, I think you made the right call in releasing this information early to the biggest hosts, because the world in which, like, we wake up and, like, so Acquia got early access, and that's, I, I understand the frustration there, and I, I, sh I share it a little bit. The world in which we wake up to find that Whale Apocalypse was hacked is such a different world from the one in which we wake up to find that whitehouse.gov is hacked. And even if you're not hosting on Aqua or Pantheon or Black Mesh or uh, uh, pl uh, platform.sh, even if you're not hosting on any of those, you would still lose money if they all got hacked. Because no one is buying Drupal services for, for an, a little bit if all of the high profile Drupal sites get hit in the same day. So I, I, think, I think it was the, the right call, and I think you guys do awesome work, and thank you for it. Yes, sir. I just want to add a, a little piece of nuance to that. Um, the security team didn't provide the hosts specifically with the advanced knowledge. Uh, it's just that some of the hosts have people on the security team. So right, yeah, I, no, no, I, I, yes, yeah, but I, I mean, it, there was no decision made. Uh, I work at Acquia, and I'm on the security team, uh, so we knew about it. Right, yeah, I, yes. Yes, sir? Uh, just a... Just a quick question on uh, kind of this was kind of a knee jerk reaction that some some clients we had uh, worked with had after the attack. Um, what do you think the value is in hiding Drupal on that sort of thing? Like hiding, obviously, you know, change log is something that always goes away. But from the, like the metadata, other things, is is that something that is actually worthwhile? Um, well, we're worth for to judge whether it's worthwhile. I would need to know your your budget. And how much it would cost to implement? Uh, yeah, no kidding. I don't think there's zero value. That's that's a thing that people kind of brush off as like that's security by obscurity. I'll never do anything. I don't know. I mean, if I'm running a bot that scrapes twenty thousand websites, like I might miss a thing or two based on based on some seemingly trivial obscurity measure. Uh, I I I wouldn't rely on that. That's uh, it's obviously not. Uh, that's obviously not the only thing you need to do, but if you have the resources to get it done, I don't see any reason not to. Yes, sir? Uh, in the situation where you might take over a site where you don't know the history of it and when it was patched and so forth back around the time this happened, is there something you can look for in the database that would give you any clue that it had been... Uh, yeah, sure. Successful. Now, just just to be clear, if you're taking over a Drupal 7.31 site or lower that has not been patched, it is hacked. You, like you don't you don't really need to check. Well, I'm it, saying it's, it's up to date now. But right. Yeah. Know. But it, no, I can I can answer yeah. that qu that question for you. That there there's uh, two things in the database that you would really want to look for that would be the kind of the canaries in the coal mine. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the the first would be. Um, bizarre entries in the menu router table, specifically in the column name, th those should all be like human readable uh, 
English words. If you have an entry in the menu router table whose name column is set to a series of random letters, that's a result of Drupal Geddon almost certainly. The, the, other, the other thing to look for it is um, in, the, uh, in the users table or the user roles table, either a new role or a new user called, uh, I, think, I think it's called mega admin or super admin or something like that. That was a, a common exploit that a lot, a lot of people saw. You might also look in the, in the um, blocks table for if any blocks have, their, have PHP in them, but th those are kind of the, the, th the three big ones. Um, and, and just to reiterate, assu assume that you are, you are hacked. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, uh, did you have a... We found some PHP files in our site's files folder, so um, you could actually go to that file from the front end and the server would run it, so. Right, yeah, so that's the, that's why it's important to have cron running, it was, yes. To follow up on the database question, um, there is a module that, is, it's called the Drupal Geddon module. I, I wouldn't rely on it, but it, one of the things it can do is scan for common things like um, breaks in the UIDs for users, because the often attackers don't get the UID sorted properly, so there's gonna be gaps or users with high UID numbers with um, admin rights, things like that. So there is a module to do some of that scanning. I wouldn't say if it comes out clean that you're actually clean, but it is one thing to give you some indications. Yeah, good good, uh, good suggestion. Any other questions? Uh, gentleman in the back wall. So just to be really clear, if we already have it infected, we see the sites folder, it does have the PHP files, we look in our database, we see the weird users, are we, and we don't have backups, are we screwed? Are we, at that point, it's determining whether to go fresh install, re-put in all your input, there's no patching, there's no upgrading and removing files, correct, no matter what? So the official answer is yes, there's no, there's no valid recovery path. The, the unofficial answer is that's a business decision. Like you, you have to decide how like, uh, um, how mu how much money is it going to cost you to attempt uh, maybe ninety nine percent confidence that you've recovered, uh, and and how much money would it cost you if you found three months from now that you have that you've been attacked again, that, like it'll just come back. Well, there I mean there might be like there might be a script that is running that you don't even know about. Gotcha. That's outside of your web route maybe. Um, so, so I from from a technical perspective, is there a way to know for sure that you've cleaned out all the all the dirt? No, I'm sorry. There's not. Thank you. Awesome session. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. Uh, lots of great detail. I just want to echo that point. Um, I would say there is a, a resource. Um, there was a, a frequently asked questions um, about Drupal Geddon, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of great resources in there, including a flowchart by Bevan Rudge about yeah. how to recover your site um, that I think is a really valuable tool that people can use. There's also linked from that is a, a guide uh, that's called Your Drupal Site Got Hacked, Now What? Um, mm -hmm. that provides step-by-step -step how to you know audit your site and try to recover from it. So I, I agree with you. It's a business decision about um, what level of effort you're willing to put into it and whether or not to, to do that. We have time for maybe one, maybe two more questions if there, if there are any. Okay, well, well, thank you guys very much for coming. Yeah.